Yeah. That's all the game is. You just forget you're playing the game. If you remember you're playing the game, then you've lost the game. What game? It doesn't matter. I'll explain to you another time. Anyway, just run me through again who we've got. Um, okay, so currently it's Katy Perry, Kelly Osbourne, uh, Lily Allen, Leona Lewis, Shane Ward, Ashley Simpson, Charlie Simpson, and Mucha Buena of the Sugar Babes. Okay. Who's <laughs> leaping out at me? Do we have any difficult backgrounds? Um, well, Leona Lewis is from Hackney. Shane Ward is from Manchester, and Kelly Osborne is from Sharon Osborne's vagina. <laughs> yes, nothing great. Uh, do we have any sort of overshadowed or frustrated band members? Uh, well, Mucha Buena, I'd say. Um, yeah, I haven't quite interested in Mucha. She's, um, she, she reminds me a bit of Brian Jones, you know. She formed the band, she came up with the name, and then before she knew it, she was out on her arse. Yeah, but she's not very rocky, you know, they're little rockers. Uh, <laughs> Charlie Simpson. <laughs> okay, um, Kurt Cobain, he most certainly is not. I don't know. His blonde bits are quite early 90s grunge. And... And also, just like Kurt Cobain, he spent a large portion of his teenage years estranged from his parents. Boarding at Uppingham? Yeah, not quite the same. <laughs> Do we have anyone who's had a sort of a purple haze or a back to black? Some kind of enormous cultural contribution? Well, Ashley Simpson's second nose was a triumph. <laughs> no? Okay, um, I guess I'd probably say it's between these two. Let's have a look. Lily Allen? <laughs> and Hansel Amadeus Manish. What? Oh God! Oh, how embarrassing! Oh. Eek. Um, well, I suppose if, if the fates would decide on me, we, we should probably consider it, shouldn't we? <laughs> okay, let's have a look, see if we can fill the uh, grade 8 clarinet. <laughs> Yeah, not quite what they're looking for, I do think. Uh, well, I suppose it's going to be Lily Allen then. Wow. Well, you yeah, know, we've got quite a difficult childhood. You know, her parents divorced. There was a lot of moving around, not fitting in. Uh, she had excellent wild child behaviour, nice drinking habit. She's covered several of the recommended narcotics. And she's got a really good line in public feuds, which I like. Yeah, I suppose, but I just, I was not, I don't know, a cultural contribution of Lily Allen. Does that really match up to, well, actually, I suppose, I completely forgot that her first album, was a massive commercial success, spawned four number ones, sold over 50 million worldwide, second album critically acclaimed and Mercury nommed. Oh, and of course, she was the host of one of the greatest television shows of the past 20 years, BBC Three's Lily Allen and Friends. Okay, well, current activity. Married with children. No, no, that's, no, that's fine. No, Kurt Cobain was also married with children. <laughs> yeah, he got married on a Hawaiian beach in green pyjamas. And was married then. So yeah, he's married. Oh no, it says Lily Beatrice Allen. Kurt Donald Cobain. <laughs> oh no. No, 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 no. Look what? at that. Look at what? that. She's what? working on the new Bridget Jones musical. Absolutely not. There is no way they won't let that go through. I'm so excited. I'm so excited! <laughs> right, um, I'm going to wonder actually. I don't think from this list they're going to take anyone. Maybe they're not going to take anyone at all this year. Maybe you're right. Maybe they are going to wait three years and go with Dappy. <laughs> Make his fucking day, wouldn't it? <laughs> Will it be three years till I'm jamming with legends? Fuck off, that Might as well do it. No, it's too obvious. Oh, well, I just, you know, I don't like guessing wrong because I lost a lot of money on Britney, Thank you. 
You're going to need to start your research by looking at the most reliable source on the whole of the entire internet. Okay. YouTube. <laughs> the tube of you. It's okay, we've saved you a little bit of time. The following is all taken practically verbatim from um, a very informative video uploaded by the Truther Girls on July the 27th, 2011. <clears throat> Hey, so normally I don't cover celebrity news, but on the 23rd of July, singer Amy Winehouse died. Now, when I first heard about this, I didn't really think too much of it. You know, she was known to be a drug addict and an alcoholic, and she'd even written a song about how she refused to go to rehab. So, you know, it seemed kind of believable that she would, like, die of a drug or alcohol overdose in her own home. Trying to make me go to rehab, I said no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, you no, no, no. I ain't got the time. She should have made time. My daddy <laughs> thinks I'm fine. He's wrong. <laughs> I really didn't think too much more about it until my friend sent me a link to this article. The Illuminati is real and it's everywhere. 
which is true. <laughs> so, Amy Winehouse obviously joined the 27 Club. This is some kind of club for famous singers and alcoholics and drug addicts. And they all die at the age of 27. And it has something to do with the Illuminati and ritual abuse, you know, ritual sacrifice and all that kind of stuff. And whoever wrote this article seems to think it has something to do with Kelly Osbourne. Well, I didn't really know. <laughs> so I went on Wikipedia, and it turns out there really is such a thing as the 27 Club. And these people are all members of it. Uh, Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones, uh, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, um, Kurt Cobain, and some guy called Richie Edwards. drugs and alcohol. You know, if you get enough of them, you know, some of them are bound to die. Get enough of them, you know, some of them are bound to die at 27. But then it turns out that after Kurt Cobain died, his mother said this. She said, now he's gone and joined that stupid club. I told him not to join that stupid club. Try to make me go to rehab. I said, no, no, no. He committed suicide in 1994. Yes, I've been black, but when I'll come Like that guy Jim Morrison. I said I don't know what he uh, died of an accidental overdose I'm gonna lose my in 1971. So I always get the bottom. In. Yeah, that was your problem. I said I think you're just depressed. Kiss me, baby, and go rest. But this article seems to think that it has something to do with uh, numerology. Uh, Amy Winehouse died at 27 and 311 days. Uh, 311 is Masonic. It stands for 3 times 11, or 33 degrees. <laughs> the article also says this. It says that at age 27, brain activity reaches a height after which it declines slowly. Uh, that's why it has something to do with uh, MK Ultra Living Forever Young. Which I guess is what Jimi Hendrix is now. Try to make me go to rehab. That's <laughs> it, no. No, no. Should have not. Choked on his own vomit in 1970. Yes, I'm black. When I come back. <laughs> her drug and alcohol use, the article reiterated that it, she had had a real problem, okay? She'd been stumbling around, forgetting her lyrics, but the neighbors said that she came around to see them, and she told them she quit drinking two weeks before she died. I don't ever want to drink again. Yeah, I'll believe that when I see a Jeff job <laughs> Beware, she is a known lesbian. <laughs> I'm gonna spend ten weeks at the end. I think I'm on the man. She died of a heroin overdose, 1970. It's not just my pride, it's just till these tears have dried. Did Amy Winehouse have a choice? Did she, was she part of some kind of ritual sacrifice so she could stay forever 27? I ain't got the time. Like Brian Jones. If my daddy thinks I'm fine. From the road, it's to make me go to rehab. I said no, no. No, no, no. Drowned in his own pool, 1969. Now, I do not know how Amy Winehouse died, okay? Did she just OD, or was she the victim of a ritual blood sacrifice to appease Kelly Osbourne? <laughs> and 
the 27 Club, is it real? Or is it just a, a way of seeing a pattern where there is no pattern? I mean, I don't know about any of this, but I do know that the people in the music and entertainment industries serve the devil, so it's possible. <laughs> so why don't you leave me your comments and let me know what you think, and thank you for watching The Truther Girls. Americans on YouTube are <laughs> So, what is required to join the 27 Club? Apart from the obvious, what do all of its members have in common? Suffering. Yeah, the greatest artists suffer. It's the price of greatness and also the means by which they achieve it, thereby earning their place in the most exclusive club in music history. And of madness, there were two kinds. One, Produced by human infirmity, the other, the divine release of the soul from the yoke of custom and convention. Plato, 370 BC. You want to write that down? <laughs> if it's not, you're not getting it. <laughs> Basically, madness is either the nonsensical behaviour of a normal person or the means by which prophets prophesize, lovers love, worshippers worship, and artists create. Insanity and art are the same thing. Frisky, 2012 lady. <laughs>
members of the 27 Club. Everybody loves a bit of pop psychology. So, let's see if you can guess the tortured genius from the unhappy childhood described. Okay, we're going to start with a very simple one, and I'll come to you. But don't worry, it's really easy and you can't get it wrong, all right? Now, which member of the 27 Club had a father who had a string of illicit affairs and also produced some substandard jazz. I'll give you a clue. Is it Amy Winehouse or Bainey Beinbaus? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who was basically abandoned by their mother and left to be raised by the neighbours while she was going around getting off her tits on gin and having a string of lovers? Like her mum, like her mum. Okay, now was that... Jimi Hendrix or Michelle Obama? <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Yes, correct, it was Jimmy Hendrix! Very good. So you seem to know a little bit about what's going on, so we'll kick it up a notch, shall we? Quick thought, how old was Kirk Cobain when his parents got divorced? <laughs> eight, eight, Kirk Cobain, parents divorced. I'll give you a clue. If he was in an English primary school, he'd be in year two. <laughs> Eight. 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 Very close. I should have come to you, shouldn't I? Seven. Okay, that was very, very close. Good. I'm going to give you a year kind of, you know, yeah, absolutely freedom. Absolutely. That's fine. Um, how many years was it since Jim Morrison had last spoken to his father when he died? Uh. Oh, well, that's just over the top, isn't it? It was four. It was four. <laughs> I think that's a long time. It was an interesting one. Okay, and uh, maybe we'll just do this last one, shall we? Okay, I'm going to go right up the back because we can move. We're not on leads. Uh, <laughs> hello. Um, so, I'm going to ask you this one, right? Which of these people in the Tricema Club had a rebellious streak that stemmed from hyper-intelligence and a problem with authority figures? Was it Brian Jones or Richie Edwards? Brian Jones. Yes, also Richie Edwards. Wait a minute. <laughs> now, whose mother lost her voice in a botched operation on her throat, thereby dashing all of her own dreams of becoming a singer herself? Interestingly, that was Janis Joplin. It's devastatingly cruel, really. Even though her daughter showed such promise, Dorothy couldn't bear to have any music in the house. She had it all removed, including the piano. <laughs> okay, you can stay. Don't touch it. <laughs> My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. So, oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? <laughs> oh Lord, won't you buy me a 3D TV? <laughs>
Obviously, it goes into the music for about an hour or so each day, but what do you do with the rest of your time and your money and all your new best friends? <gasps> Yummy, squirmy, tasty drugs! <laughs> and alcohol, it's so boring. <laughs> but, no, but, it's not just recreation, is it? No, it is the necessary means to opening the doors of perception. Because, obviously, to make biological survival possible, mind at large has to be funneled through this reducing valve of the brain and nervous system. And what comes out of the other end is but a measly trickle of the sort of consciousness that can help us just keep alive on the surface of this particular planet. So, as mind at large seeps past the no longer watertight valve, all sorts of biologically useless things start to happen. In some cases, there may be extrasensory perceptions. In um, and others, you know, they discover a world of visionary beauty. And to others still is revealed the glory, the infinite value and wonder of naked existence, of the given, unconceptualized event. And in the final stage of egoism, right, uh, there, there, is this, there is this obscure knowledge that all is actually in all. Actually, all is in each. This is as near, I take it, as the finite mind can ever get to perceiving everything that's going on everywhere in the universe. <laughs> All just actually. Are you getting any of it? Just right now. Okay, you know what? Let's just get in the zone. Yeah, let's do a jam. A jam? Yeah, a Jimmy Jam. No, no, no a Jim and Jimmy Jam. Oh, the James's Jam. I'm already a bit drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Two members of the Twenty Seven Club know how to get fucked quite as spectacularly as Hendrix and Morrison. Well, I think Jock Blue would have something to say about that. We are not doing a Jim, Ginny, and Janice Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Jones. Remember what happened last time? Right. Um, everyone's got a drink, I assume. If you could just grab your drinks for me, just. Uh, let me see what you've got. Just grab your drinks the way you've got them. And if you could just finish them. Just down. Finish everything you've got. Everyone at the back as well. I can see you. Don't think I can't. Okay, fine. I'll join it. Yeah, keep downing. Come on. We can see you. We're having a drugs binge, you know. So you're all a bit quiet. <laughs> Good. Well done, yes, thank you. Well done, lady in second row. quite some time ago. <laughs> never a good idea. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
country in your arms Arms that chain, eyes that lie Break on through to the other side those levels of fame and greatness that make you an inspiration to millions? Not an option for these 27 Club people, you know? I mean, take Kurt Cobain, for example. His note could have read, oh, I'm just going to retire to the country with my wife and daughter. But it didn't. It said this. I haven't felt the excitement of listening to, as well as creating music, as well as really writing something for too many years now. I feel guilty beyond words about these things. For example, when we're backstage and the lights go out and the manic roar of the crowd begins, it doesn't affect me in the way in which it did for Freddie Mercury, who seemed to love and relish the love and admiration from the crowd. It's just something I totally admire and envy. What are you going to do? <laughs> Where are you going to go when all you know is love for a million strangers? Sometimes I feel as though I should have a punch-in time clock before I walk out on stage. I've tried everything in my power to appreciate it, and I do, God believe me, I do. But it's not enough. I appreciate the fact that I and we have affected and entertained a lot of people. I must be one of the narcissists who only appreciate things when they're alone. I'm too sensitive. I need to be slightly numb in order to regain the enthusiasm. So funny, isn't it? I mean, so many of these people were so painfully uncomfortable in their own skins that they felt the need to pull away by creating these overblown theatrical stage persons. Who would do that? <laughs> Jim just flipped out every time he got on stage, didn't he? And Janice had an alter ego, inexplicably named Pearl. Pearl, <laughs> the same. She stands up when she plays the piano. Just like it. Here on the night. Pearl's a singer She sings songs for the lost And the lonely That's you <laughs> Her job is entertaining folks Singing songs Most of us probably carefully lowered into our graves, ancient, beautifully preserved. 
but you've got to admit, there's something rather exciting about the idea of skidding in sideways. <laughs> Clutching a crack pipe and a bottle of Jack. With a body all used up and covered in glitter. Hot and dangerous. If you're one of us, then roll with us. Cause we make the hipsters fall in love. And we've got the hot pants on and up. And yes, of course we does. We're running this town just like a club. And no, you don't want to mess with us. Got Jesus on my necklace. <laughs> I've just thought of the best one ever! Ian Curtis, yeah. Buddy Holly, yeah. Otis Redding, Jeff Buckley, Aaliyah, Eva Cassidy, all these people died. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it! Yeah. I mean, that's good! Yeah, it's as good. I mean, you know, we can probably find some unhappiness in their childhoods, make some really broad, sweeping generalisations to establish some kind of link between them. Uh, they're all famous, that'll help. Uh, so, uh, well, you know, they'll have been to some kind of party, taken some kind of drugs, and via these very selective analyses, we can encourage a cognitive bias from this lot and sell an entire empire of myth on it. Hang on, no audience would be that stupid. I'm sorry, that was me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, look, don't, don't misunderstand us. We're not saying that the 27 Club isn't a strange coincidence, but that's all it is. And it means that we ultimately overlook the achievements of the individual. 
You know, everybody has their demons, and the only sad link between the 27s is that they were ultimately destroyed by theirs. At age 27. Yeah, but we're mythologizing the wrong thing here. You know, we should be putting them with the likes of, of Lennon and McCartney, and Burt Bacharach, and The Clash, and Cher, the world's greatest musicians, alive or dead. Oh my god, can you imagine if Cher dies at 27? <laughs> She's like 127. She's Lloyd, she looks really good, I think. Cher Lloyd? What about Cher Lloyd? Okay, fine, Cher Lloyd then, fine. Cher Lloyd, if Cher Lloyd were to die at 27, her entire life shouldn't just be about that. Might be a slight relief. The thing is, Cher Lloyd can't die yet. She hasn't done anything. She hasn't had her first accidental overdose. She hasn't shaved her head yet. She hasn't done anything. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is an imposed perspective. You see, this yeah. is what we do to our stars. We build them up, and then we force them to fit whatever suits our arbitrary view of their place in the world. We made the 27 Club out of our own heads, out of our own expectations. We should be disgusted with ourselves. Right, calm down. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's disgusting. I mean, but the people to really be disgusted with are the professionals. And by that, I mean the professional mourners, you know? The people who make money off the 27 Club. Um, no, no, we, we're not making money. <laughs> um, you know, I know, it's just that they leave behind such a mess. I know, I know, but the thing is, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it, the 27 Club? Because if you make it in, you're a guaranteed legend, okay? But you're also public property, and people are going to exploit you. You know, you will have biopics probing into your history. You'll have a few documentaries made. I mean, Topshop will put your face on a T-shirt, all those kind of things, which isn't... Well, actually, it's not not great, is it? I mean, it's actually, you know, it's quite a solid economic decision. You know, self-destruction, isn't it? I mean, you know, like, it's actually a good career move, I suppose. No, I mean, obviously, you know, it all has to be handled with sensitivity, otherwise it's just embarrassing, dappy. But I just think, you know, <laughs> let's imagine, let's say, okay, let's imagine if I was to die now, because I'm 27. So if I was to die now, what would the legend of really so a frisky man a very embarrassing turn. Why? <laughs> why are you talking about this? Well, why is that? That's not embarrassing. You know, I'm 27, I'm a performer. I like Pina Grigio. So what's to say <laughs> if I couldn't, you know, join the 27 Club? I'm not, I'm not saying I want to join. I'm just saying, you know, just want to offer you a hypothetical analysis of why you might choose to do it. Because we've already proven, haven't we, that you're not mystically selected to join. That's all complete bollocks. But if you can make it make sense that you're supposed to join, that's when it becomes a myth, you know. So, for instance, um, you know, I was left in a pram by my mum when I was two in super drugs. So that's a difficult <laughs> childhood tip, okay? And then also, I am addicted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would say I'm seriously addicted to amphetamines and Downton Abbey. So if you add all these things together, you're making, you know, you're ticking the boxes. And then you add in some convenient numerology, and it all makes sense, and the pattern fits. And, you know, don't be silly, because I mean, you would actually benefit from this. Because you would benefit from the legend. You'd be the Courtney Love to my Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Sorry, um, what is, sorry, why are we back at the retarded American numerology shit? <laughs> you know, we know it doesn't make sense, but it's just that, you know, we, you know, if, if other people believe it, then it's just, you know, good to exploit it. I mean, you know, my personal birth chart, what's convenient about this is that my personal birth number is 33. That's Masonic, the same as Amy Winehouse. And if you all think that that means that I should have joined... Why are you doing it? Look, I'm sorry, if you're, if you're just jealous that your chart doesn't add up to membership, you know, just take it out of me. I can't help it, you're no longer in your 20s. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got till 38. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> So, you're 27. So, we are both 27. Does anyone not 
not down their drink. And we just... <laughs> trying to say is it's not up to me or you know you if we join the 27 club okay that's not a decision that we can make you make that decision for us because this is all made by you and for you you know the audience demands entertainment from its performance not just on stage but in every aspect of your lives i mean you tell us when we're funny you tell us when we're good you tell us what we were going for and if we got there or not you know this difficult second album thing that's not a problem for us it's a problem before we even start because of what you expect of it you know you're just sitting there one minute you're waving palms and the next minute you're shouting crucify them crucify them crucify them <laughs> We'll, we'll sing a song now. Um, and it is a beautiful song that sums it up very well. It was originally introduced into the world by that tortured genius and future 27 Club candidate herself, Taylor Momsen from Gossip Girl. And the great thing about Taylor Momsen... Okay.
singing a song from a film about Bette Midler. Oh, sorry, no, it's about Janis Joplin. No, 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 it's about a character whose similarity to Janis Joplin is in no way intentional and it shouldn't be inferred. <laughs> and, um, I'll just sing. Uh... <laughs> <laughs>
coming down and uh, <laughs> um, supporting this, this new work. It's very much a work in progress and an expect. Don't come anywhere for me. <laughs> Uh, it's very much an experiment and a work in progress. And um, when we were previewing the show in London, uh, the, the feedback was that the ending was a little dark. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, uh, we made the decision to finish the show with an uplifting encore. <laughs> For you I was a flame yeah. Love is a losing game Five story fire as you came Love is a losing game Why do I wish I never played Oh, what a mess <laughs> And now the final frame Love is a losing girl Oh crap, I just lost the game. Oh.